Iceland is a little country, far north in the cold sea. Men found it and went to live there more than a thousand years ago. During the warm season they used to fish and make fish oil, and hunt sea birds and gather feathers, and tend their sheep and make hay. But the winters were long and cold and dark. Men and women and children stayed in the house and carded and spun and wove and knit. A whole family sat for hours around the fire in the middle of the room. That fire gave the only light. Shadows flitted in the dark corners. Smoke curled along the high beams in the ceiling. The children sat on the dirt floor close by the fire. The grown people were on a long, narrow bench that they had pulled up to the light and warmth. Everybody's hands were busy with wool. The work left their minds free to think and their lips to talk. What was there to talk about? The summer's fishing, the killing of a fox, a voyage to Norway? But the people grew tired of this little gossip. Fathers looked at their children and thought, They are not learning much. What will make them brave and wise? What will teach them to love their country and old Norway? Will not the stories of battles, of brave deeds, of mighty men do this? So as the family worked in the red firelight, the father told of the kings of Norway, of long voyages to strange lands, of good fights, and in farmhouses all through Iceland. These old tales were told over and over until everybody knew them and loved them. Some men could sing and play the harp. This made the stories all the more interesting. People called such men scolds, and they called their songs sagas. Every midsummer there was a great meeting. Men from all over Iceland came to it and made laws. During the day there were rest times when no business was going on. Then some scald will take his harp and walk to a large stone or a knoll and stand on it and begin a song of some brave deed of an old Norse hero. At the first sound of the harp and the voice men came running from all directions crying out, The scald! The scald! A saga! They stood about for hours and listened. They shouted applause. When the scald was tired, some other man would come up from the crowd and sing or tell a story. As the scald stepped down from his high position, some rich man would rush up to him and say, Come and spend the next winter at my house. Our ears are thirsty for song. So the best scalds travelled much and visited many people. Their songs made them welcome everywhere. They were always honoured with good seats at a feast. They were given many rich gifts. Even the King of Norway would sometimes send across the water to Iceland, saying to some famous scald, Come and visit me. You shall not go away empty-handed. Men say that the sweetest songs are in Iceland. I wish to hear them. These tales were not written. Few men wrote or read in those days. Scalds learned songs from hearing them sung. At last people began to write more easily. Then they said, These stories are very precious. We must write them down to save them from being forgotten. After that, many men in Iceland spent their winters in writing books. They wrote on sheepskin, vellum we call it. Many of these old vellum books have been saved for hundreds of years and are now in museums in Norway. Some leaves are lost, some are torn, all yellow and crumpled. But they are precious. They tell us all that we know about that olden time. There are the very words that the men of Iceland wrote so long ago. Stories of kings and of battles and of ship sailing. Some of those old stories I have told in this book. End of introduction. Recording by Timothy Ferguson, Gold Coast, Australia.